What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. Today we are hopping into the brand new fresh off the press Ultimate Black Panther issue number one. Now if you guys have not been keeping up with the brand new Ultimate Universe, I highly recommend that you go check out everything that we got in our playlist. Everything has been set up brilliantly by Jonathan Hickman, with it all kicking off under Ultimate Invasion. The maker has tried to rebirth his universe. And in the universe that he has created, we get to see it all unfold. We've already seen Ultimate Spider-Man. Now we get to see Wakanda. We follow T'Challa. And we get to see how the war with Moon Knight is about to begin. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we pick up in West Africa. We have troopers that are hitting the ground. The armies of Moon Knight. And they are claiming West Africa as their own. In the wood lines, we have the Wakandans that are watching. Not allowed to interfere. Not allowed to act. They can only watch this village get burned. The people murdered on the ground. They can only return to their king with the truth. They have now seen the anger of Ra and Khonshu. The justice of Wakanda will soon follow. This is what picks us up with T'Challa. Waking up from a nightmare. His dreams have been trying to tell him something, but he can't figure out what it is. But today, he has to push this to the back of his mind. Because this morning, he has the duties of a king. As he flies into the Citadel of Knowledge, this is where he is met by his father. They talk briefly about his dream. His father tries to let him know that maybe the gods are trying to speak to you. That if you really want to understand these dreams, you must go to the mother of Vodu Khan. That she is seeking your counsel. But T'Challa doesn't really trust them, believing that she wants his servitude. Nonetheless, T'Challa must recognize their power. Eventually, heeding his father's advice, he goes to the temple of Vodu Khan. Here he talks to the sacred mother of the Vodou Khan, Matron Amala. And T'Challa makes it known right off the bat that he's not really into the superstition. That he does not fear. That he gets his knowledge from books, not from his dreams. Letting Black Panther know that in her meditation, they have sensed violence. Enemies in their midst. Enemies outside the wall. Telling him to trust no one. That your dreams are warning you. That the gods are on your side. But remember that the gods can be fickle, to not choose fear, but choose awareness that they will be his eyes as well. Offering gratitude to the Vodou Khan, we pick up at the Royal Palace of Wakanda. We pick up in the Royal Court. The scouts bringing knowledge of what is happening in West Africa. That the armies of Ra and Khonshu are on the march. T'Challa says that we will do nothing, and many find this hard to deal with. Not that he's going to do nothing per se, but he is doing nothing about the circumstance currently at hand. That he will not march his army out there. He will not enact a war. Right now, they need information. They need reconnaissance. Need to know exactly what they want. And once they have all the information, then they can consider war. With Shuri going ahead and leaving, she meets up with the Captain of Arms. As the two of them have a discussion, the Captain's really just letting her know that you can take all of that anger you have built up, all of that conflict, and build Wakanda something beautiful. Use it to fuel your mind. And so while she goes off to do just that, we pick back up in West Africa, another village, a young boy, and the forces of Ra and Khonshu. As they line up and they prepare to fire and gun down this young boy, he cries out, and his cries are met with Killmonger. Killmonger showing up and butchering these guys on site, saying that more will be coming. This is when the air support flies in, a helicopter hovering over Killmonger. He calls in for the love of his life to deal with it. And that is when the storm begins. The thunder rumbles and the lightning cracks. Striking down that air support as the infantry come in on Killmonger. He throws his weapon and we see it electrified. In an instant, the forces of Ra and Khonshu have been absolutely decimated. And Killmonger lets it be known that the people of this village, your gods and hidden kingdoms, they will no longer protect you. But Killmonger and the Windrider, they will. 
as we pick up at Wakanda, the annual celebration of life. T'Challa speaks to the people, talks about them, their faith, how they are all family, that Wakanda is a legacy, but the servant that is on the platform with Black Panther is an agent of Khonshu, is an agent of Ra, a suicide bomber sent to take out T'Challa. As T'Chaka sees this happening, he watches it unfold. He jumps from his seat and he pushes his son. As T'Challa falls down to the ground, the platform explodes. The Black Panther suit surrounding T'Challa as he hits the ground. Looking around him, he sees his father's burning body. He calls for the queen. He calls for his sister. He calls for the Vodou Khan. Because they're enemies, they call themselves Moon Knight. And Wakanda is now at war. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This is a great start to Ultimate Black Panther. As we pick up in this universe, we see that things are different here. Wakanda isn't necessarily known to the world. They keep to themselves. They try to avoid conflict. They try to avoid war. But they have been unable to do so. The forces of Ra and Khonshu, they are at the door. They are knocking. After this suicide attack, T'Challa, he is ready for war. He tried to avoid it at all costs, but there is no other option. Iron Man has yet to show up, but we can assume that it is only a matter of time before he comes seeking out the ultimate Black Panther. Because while war with Moon Knight, with the moon itself, that will be a monstrous battle in its own right. But there is a much bigger battle at play. The battle against the Maker. It will be only a matter of time before he emerges. And the world has to be ready to take him on. I think my favorite part of all of this so far is definitely Killmonger and Storm. A.K.A. Windrider. I'm excited to see how all of this unfolds. The Ultimate Universe universe has been fun. It has been refreshing. It has just been so nice to get away from the usual. To get away from the 616 and see these characters in different aspects. But not also different aspects, but written so well. For me, the, the, the rebirth, the reimagining of the Ultimate Universe, I'm excited for, I'm here, I'm sitting in my seat, my seat buckle, it's really tightened, and I am ready to see what Jonathan Hickman brings to the table when it comes to the overall story. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you want to get caught up on everything that is happening with the Ultimate Universe, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It's gonna get you completely caught up on everything that is going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, video, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And with that being said, until the next breakdown.